Coming up to 20 past seven, it's Friday night, 22nd of January. And here's a big question for you. What were you doing when you were 18 years old? I think I was just about getting used to the fact I had a driving licence. Lord knows who would give me one of them. But that's the age of my Somerset artists this week, who are 18 and 19, and they've just released their debut EP. Now, Hugo Peel is from Bruton, and Sid Plimmer is from Wells, and they form the minimalist punk duo Stanton PLC. You'll hear the title track from the EP, End of the Line, in just a little while. But first, let's welcome them to the programme. Evening to you, lads. Evening, mate. Yeah, all good. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming on the programme. Lovely to have you here. Now, I think you're probably the youngest musicians I have had on the show, if at all, to be honest with you. Wow. So, really? Wow. Yeah, that's yeah absolutely. But it's funny because a lot of the musicians that I do have on always say, well, a lot of them say that their musical interest stems from the age of which you guys are now. So is that the case for you? Is that the case for you? Or did you discover it a bit earlier? Where did it all start for you? Well, I think me and Sid have known each other all our lives. And yeah. uh, I've been playing guitar and instruments for a long time. So as Sid, his family's very musical. And I think because of those two things, we decided why wait, you know? We're kind of musically activated and know each other really well. So it kind of came quite easily, I think. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we have actually been going for a while longer, really. I mean, we've been going since we were about, what, 16 now? 16, yeah. So, yeah, it's taken us a while to get into gear, but yeah. And did you did you always have that as an ambition? Did you always, really, from a very early age, want to be a musician of sorts? I'm not sure. I'm not sure directly sort of a musician. I think we've both always had sort of creative families. And uh, that's sort of a similar outlook on the world where we want to sort of express ourselves. So I think that's always been there. And I think mm. that's all you need, really. For sure. And I've been, I've always, I've always loved music, obviously, from a very young age. I've always been interested in music. My dad's introduced me to a lot of bands that I still like today. And I think from a very early age, I was having music forced upon me. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, your genre is punk was is that very different to your parents and what they listened to in um style maybe not in sentiment i think I would say. yeah i totally agree my dad listens to a lot of you know old classic punk from the 70s and um you know it's i think it's about the message really it's not about the music it's about it's kind of an attitude do you know what i mean absolutely yeah. So, I mean, I mean, the biggest one, I imagine, probably was the Sex Pistols. Yeah, I, I, yeah, that's probably the big um, the big punk band people people think of the original punk band. But I think the new the new wave of punk that you'll be hearing now with bands like the Seaford Mods and things like that, that's a, a, it's a different thing from the original yeah. punk movement. Yeah. In the 70s. And I mean, why did you choose that genre in in? your sort of path I suppose I think a lot of it comes from when you're sort of you're working with lack of experience lack of money to actually buy instruments and things like that and lack of confidence in yourself a very easy way to do that is to get on stage and just scream <laughs> and it's sort of that kind of like teenage angst thing of like I'm just going to expel whatever I have in me it's kind of a very accessible format to poetically and sort of artistically express yourself I think starting out I, t I totally agree and it's about you know I've I've never liked um genres like prog rock and things like that I don't like the idea of people trying too hard I think music's yeah. a quite a almost um animalistic kind of instinct inside person and we have a lot to say I think and I don't see why it needs to be overthought you know just yeah basics <laughs> yeah because i mean you mentioned there about the poetry of it all i mean how difficult is it because i mean you almost have to be poets as well as being musicians don't you <laughs> well the poetry was the um the sort of first thing for me and that was just a sort of way of expressing what you see around you really I, that kind of came first for me personally they, they just fall hand in hand really nicely i think with our with our music Mm. And I think as, as the poetry came first for Sid, it was the, the music that came first for me. My, yeah. I really struggle writing um, lyrics as, as good as Sid's. I think Sid's lyrics are fantastic. I've never been able to write anything that good, but I can write a riff quite, you know, it comes quite yeah. easily to me. 
Yeah. And so, that's why I think we work well together. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So is this a setup with the new EP then? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah, Definitely. yeah. Yeah. There are some lyrics that I've contributed and things like that, but yeah. I think it's if you had to split that up, it would be like that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I mean, growing up in the West Country, Hugo being from Bruton, Sid from Wells, I mean, there is a lot of Somerset in between you. So yeah. is yeah. is Somerset a bit of a an influence, I suppose, on your music? Does it play a part? Absolutely. It does. For sure. Yeah, I mean... It's I, I'm not sure Somerset itself. It's it's just sort of like what Somerset is and what living in Somerset is like, and the different parts of the West Country that we come from and the people that exist in them. And it's kind of I think everything we've a massive amount of what we've written has been a commentary on that kind of society and those kind of people. I think because mm, a lot of the, I think a lot of the punk you'll hear is is from from cities and, and yeah. things like that. And I think we have a somewhat, you know, unique voice being from the countryside. I mean, me and Sid yeah. used to live together in, not live together, in the same village rather, which is not as far away as we live now. And that was yeah. helpful in terms of writing music together. And we have obviously lots of shared experiences of the county and, and the area mm -hmm. and what it's like living in the countryside. Yeah. yeah. Although you say you live in a city, but actually, I suppose, Sid, you're in Wells, so a, si a city like yeah, the, the differing, yeah. I mean, the differing in cities between Bristol and Wells is obviously quite big, isn't it? But uh, I suppose yeah. there, there are yeah. some interesting things to write about in terms with Somerset in the punk format, I suppose. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think there's a lot of stuff that that people don't hear about when, you know, people hear about the country and they think about it and it's kind of idealistic and stuff. And then. I think some, sometimes people forget that there are people living here <laughs> and, yeah. that, and that we have we have things to say and we have lives and we do things and, you know. Yeah. And do I we... think a lot of what we do is, sorry to cut you off, is sort of playing playing off those stereotypes with what it's actually like existing in a, in a space like um, an area of outstanding natural beauty, like some mm. of, with just a pretty ordinary life and sort of pretty down to earth things, really, and riffing those two things off each other. Because I suppose, does punk sort of lend itself to, in terms of its writing, what mm. people in the city have that people in the countryside necessarily don't have? I don't know, transport links, for example. Sometimes they're <laughs> yeah. a lot weaker in yeah. the countryside than they are in the city. Yeah, I guess I guess that does come into it. I think it's... Um, I, yeah, I'm not sure. I think there's, there's a shared thing with... Um, with the countryside and the cities, which is a, a, a commentary on, um, I don't know, sort of class and politics and things like that. But yeah, I guess I'm, I'm not sure really. Yeah, I'm not sure with that one. We'll leave that to the folk people. <laughs> I think, yeah, in that case. yeah, absolutely. Good idea. Well, well, let's talk about this new EP then that you've got out. There's five yeah. tracks on it. Uh, the title track and indeed the EP is called End of the Line. Uh, we're going to hear yeah. the title track just a little bit. What what can you tell us about it? Why why did you decide to start writing and well, making it? I mean, excellent segue, really. You talking about transport links because the whole song is about the 376 to Bristol. It's all about buses. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> that's, you couldn't have done that better. Brilliant. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's about, and it's kind of a bit metaphorical as well, because not only are you, are you literally having to move, you know, having to take the bus all the time to get anywhere interesting, and it's about, you know, the fact that you have to, the fact there's not a lot going on around here, and that if you want to do anything, you have to, you have to get up and do it yourself. You can't just, exactly. it doesn't come to you. You have to make the effort to go somewhere else, you know? Yeah. And so... The frustrations surrounding that. <laughs> Well, in that case, let's let's hear the title track then. So this is yeah. End of the Line, and this is Hugo and Sid. They are a duo from Wells and Bruton, and this is the title track, End of the Line. Have a listen. It's BBC Radio Somerset. It's Luke Knight here with you until 10. That was a song called End of the Line by Stanton PLC, who... Oh, they always have a bit at the end. They're, they're joint, like, major songwriters. Always have a bit at the end, don't you, lads? Always sticking a little yeah, bit. Yeah, <laughs> we do. Like, I, kind of, I think it likes... I think I like to keep it kind of genuine and <laughs> as if we're having a kind of conversation with the yeah, listener. Absolutely. That's proper Pink Floyd style. That is very good. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there we go. That, this, that's a song from... Well, it's a title track from your new EP, which is yeah. End of the Line. You've got five songs on there. And it was released mm. last year, I'm right in thinking. So... Yes, yeah. yeah. I mean, how was 2020 for you guys as musicians more than anything, I suppose? Well, uh, I mean... I think the same as, as many musicians. We found some time to write, 
to write music, um, you know, uh, to, to see each other and, and to write some music. But, you know, this was going to be a big year for us. I think we had a lot of gigs planned. We were going to play Glastonbury, which this year has just been cancelled again. So yeah. a bit depressed about that. But yeah, it was it was a bit of a blow to everyone, you know. Yeah. But we've I think we've got on with it. We've made we've made music. Yeah, I, I, I think as well with this kind of time period that we've had, some of these songs are really quite old now on this EP and some of them are, are sort of newer, but they're still pre-lockdown. They're still from a very different world to the one we're living mm. in now, sort of politically and everything. So I think it, it's been a very interesting time for kind of reflection and sort of writing new material and kind of, I know we're sort of like, it is our debut EP, but it's kind of like thinking about where we go from there. This kind of time mm. has been quite interesting for that, yeah. I think. Does it does it lend itself to your writing for the punk genre? I I think it's simplicity, um, definitely. I th it's how I found writing accessible was sort of people like John Cooper Clark, people like that that just wrote what they saw and were very comfortable just talking about the mundane. That was a really groundbreaking thing for me in terms of making art and writing accessible so I will always have a soft spot for punk and punk poetry because of that even if it wherever it goes from there I think it was really important for me in mm. my sort of artistic lyrical language really and uh, in terms of lockdown um, and you know I've a lot of musician friends of mine and me I, I've been finding it quite hard to write music because you, you're mm. not doing anything so you yeah. think that'd be good to write music, but it's not. I feel totally uninspired. If you're not doing anything, you have nothing to write about. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? And just you don't feel energized and like stuff like that. So I've, I'm, I'm, my workload, are usual compared to how much I write, you know, when I'm seeing Sid a lot, is is lower. I'm not writing as much as I would usually because I'm, I'm just feeling a bit kind of devoid of inspiration. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, I suppose, is that sort of almost keeping you going a little bit in the knowledge that you have got this EP out, you have got definitely. songs released totally. and you've got people listening totally. to them? Well, yeah, definitely. Totally. And we've, um, we're, the EP is coming out on, um, on vinyl, actually. Nice. We've just, we've just finished, finished sorting that out. It's being manufactured. Should be, should be around fully by March. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is very exciting for us. Yeah. Oh, I love that. That's that's brilliant. That's something to mount on your wall, isn't it? You know, you can't mount. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You can't mount a download on your wall, can you? So that's no, that's, no, that, right. that's great. That's great, guys. It's, well done for that. Orange, orange and white as well. Very colourful. <laughs> nice. Oh, that's really great. Excellent. I'm pleased for you guys for that. But um, Thanks, I mean, but uh, before all the lockdown happened and we could gig, what were you guys doing? Yeah. Were you going around places around Somerset? We were. Yeah, we're very, very Froome focused. That's where, that's my nearest kind of big venues. We played the Cheese and Grain three, maybe four times. Yeah. Nice. And other venues in, um, in Froome. And then, yeah. it, but that was the thing about 2020 is that we had gigs, but for Bristol, we had a, you know, a, a tour booked around in, in the country and at Glastonbury and things. So we were about to branch out and go, you know, do all yeah. the gigs, but that, that's kind of gone to pot a little bit <laughs> but it, it's on ice isn't it that's yeah for it's sure it, it totally is yeah they haven't lost appetite for us or um you know no but i imagine when the venues and the festivals are happy to come back and they are safe to come back i mean they'll be looking yeah. for artists like you guys who are so keen yeah, yeah i mean yeah, that's what we're absolutely. hoping yeah so this yeah. is what's next for you guys, basically, is just trying to get to those bigger venues, trying to get to those yeah. bigger gigs and get your name out there, basically. Totally, yeah, totally. Bris Bristol's on the, on, the, on the map. And we've got um, a, fr a friend of ours is in a, um, another band and they were going to have a tour around Europe and we were going to be supporting them on that. Nice. But that is obviously, that's on ice because of Krona, but um, that should be, should be back on, as should um, gigs around the country, even, you know. I can so, certainly, yeah. I can certainly see you guys getting into Bristol. You're certainly the oh. sort of act that I imagine would do well up in Bristol, especially at places like the O2. Yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you. That, I mean, that yeah, that's that's great to hear. <laughs> I mean, that's that's what we're hoping. You know, we have yeah. had people mention that, and it's really nice of you to say that because yeah, it is. That's kind of what we're uh, what we're hoping.
that's the aim that is the aim yeah well, exactly guys it's been fabulous talking to you thank you so much for coming on the program if people thank you so much for having us if people want to listen to your stuff obviously i do have to put a disclaimer out there because we are playing the radio edit so yeah. there is a little bit of fruity language uh, in the full versions but if Definitely. you do like what you hear uh, from stanton P- uh, plc uh, where can people check you out guys um, we are Stanton PLC Band on Instagram, and you can find us on on anywhere. You can find that EP on Spotify, YouTube Music, you know, any Bandcamp. Apple Music, anywhere you want to find it. It's there. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant, guys. You've been great.